All right, let's talk a little bit about symmetry and even and odd functions. All right, so symmetry with respect to an axis. The graph of equation is symmetric with respect to the y-axis if the replacement of x with negative x results in an equivalent equation. Holy cow, what the heck does that mean? All right, guys, let's look up here at the top. If I have something, and you have to bear with me on my drawing, let's take a function like this, the squaring function. This is something where I am symmetric to the y-axis. That means I have a mirror image on the other side of the y-axis. Said another way, I could fold on the y-axis and I get one half of the function on top of the other half. Okay, let's talk about x-axis symmetry. The graph of an equation is symmetric with respect to the x-axis if the replacement of y with negative y results in an equivalent equation. All right, so what does that mean? All right, again, if I fold on the x-axis, then I get function my function on top of each other. All right, so minus my, my terrible drawing skills, this is an example at the top of x-axis symmetry. I have a mirror image on the other side of the x-axis. All right, so let's test for axis symmetry. Is this graph symmetric to the y-axis? I'm asking you specifically to the y-axis. So we are going to replace x with negative x. So you can see here I substitute in negative x for x, and what happens when I square a negative? It just goes away, and you can see that I end up back with my original equation. So yes, this function has y-axis symmetry. We can look at the graph and certainly tell that we have a mirror image on the other side of the y-axis. All right, is this graph symmetric to the x-axis? Meaning if I were to fold on the x-axis, do I get my function on top of itself? Hopefully you're all thinking, yeah, yeah, sure, it looks that way. But let's do the algebra. We're going to substitute y with negative y. All right, so again, I plug in a negative y for y. I square it. It goes away. And as you can see, I get back to my original function. And yes, this function, or I should not say function. It's not a function. This would be a relation, has x-axis symmetry. All right, what about this one? Is the graph symmetric to the x-axis? and the y-axis. All right, so let's step through this. Let's replace y with negative y and x with negative x. And again, under the square, both negatives go away and we get back to our original uh, graph or the circle. All right, oops. Let's look at another one. Is the graph symmetric to the x-axis or the y-axis? Well, Let's replace y with negative y. All right, when I do, I end up with a negative y and I distribute it over to the right side. So let me show you what I, what I did not type. If I have negative y, I'm replacing y with negative y. All right, so this would be you guys just quote unquote plugging in the negative y. And then I div multiply everything by a negative one or divide everything by a negative one. You can see how everything's just changing sign. All right, similarly, I can do the same thing with negative x. All right, so that would be y equals, well, negative x is just gonna give me negative two x plus one should. Ah, it was originally negative, and so it becomes positive. That should not be there. Let's see, do I have no eraser tool? Oh, well, I'll just make it a positive. All right, and so you can see the whole point here is that whether we replace y with negative y or x with negative x, never do we get back to the original function y equals negative 2x plus 1. And so here's an example where there is no symmetry whatsoever. And we can see that with our line. Let's look at the graph. If we fold on the y-axis, we don't get the line on top of itself. And if we fold on the x-axis, we don't get the line on top of itself. All right, one last type of symmetry we want to talk about is symmetry with the origin. 
all right? We are symmetric to the origin if we have x-axis and y-axis symmetry, all right? That, what that means is if we replace x with negative x and y with negative y, we get an equivalent equation, okay? So uh, let's talk about this. Is this graph symmetric to the origin, all right? In other words, if I fold over the origin, do I get the circle on top of itself? And, and we certainly do. We've already seen where we can replace x and y with negative x and negative y and under the square they both the negatives go away and we get our equivalent um, function here back to the original all right um let's see what is the best way i'm going to show well let's wait till the next example this is the best one all right is this graph sym symmetric to the origin so we have y equals x cubed or the cubing function all right well Let's replace y with negative y and x with negative x. Again, this is the algebra of how to do it. All right, and we can see here that we get negative y equals negative x cubed. All right, multiply both sides by negative 1. We get y equals x cubed. We get back to our original. So here's a situation where we have symmetry to the origin. Do you see it? All right, and so how we've talked about flipping over the x-axis. Uh, to see our x-axis symmetry or flipping over the y-axis to see our y-axis symmetry. All right, so how does the flipping work to get our origin symmetry? Note here, all right, and I'm going to do this in pieces. All right, here is the first part in the first quadrant of my cubing function. If I flip it over the y-axis, do I not have this right here? And hopefully you're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now flip over the x-axis, and I get the other half of my cubing function. So testing for origin symmetry, the way to see it geometrically is it's a double flip. You flip over the y-axis and then the x-axis, or you can flip it the other way over the x-axis and then over the y-axis. The key is it's just a double flip geometrically. All right, and then I've included this slide simply as a review for you guys so you can see, you have kind of a, a slide where you can see the x-axis symmetry, the y-axis symmetry, and the origin symmetry. All right, let's talk a little bit about even and odd functions. A function f is called an even function if when I plug in negative x, I get my original function. Well, this is just y-axis symmetry. All right, so again, even function just means y-axis symmetry. All right, an odd function means if I plug in negative x, I get a negative version of my function. All right, this is origin symmetry. Okay, so again, odd function just means symmetric to the origin. How are you going to remember that? O odd, O origin. All right, let's look at some examples. That's when math makes sense. Decide whether the function is even, odd, or neither. All right, well, if I replace x with negative x, all right, so I'm plugging in negative x, what happens when I take a negative to the fourth power or I take I square a negative? Well, hopefully you're all saying, well, the negative just goes away. And as you can see, I get back to my original. So I plug in negative x, I get my original function, f is even, all right? That's the algebra way to do it. Is there a trick? Yes, of course, if I'm asking, there's a trick. What's the trick? Well, notice that f of x has only even exponents. All right, so what do I mean by even exponents? Make sure you know what even and odd is. All right, even exponent, even exponent. Divisible by 2 is even. All right, so I have a 4 and a 2 up there. They're both even. It's no quinky dink that the function's even. All right, there's a reason. Even ex only even exponents gets us an even function. All right, decide whether this function is even, odd, or neither. All right, let's replace x with negative x. All right, what happens to a negative when we cube it? Well, that negative pops out in front, and you can see with the negative 9 and negative x, it's making it positive. All right, well, this is just a negative version of our original function. Everything is the opposite sign. All right, so this means our function is odd. Is there a trick? Well, probably since I'm asking. All right, yes, because notice the exponents are odd. Odd means not even, not, maybe some of you are thinking I'm odd, but here I'm talking about the exponents. 
3 is an odd number, and the one that we don't see, that's an odd number. All right, so only odd exponents means odd function. All right, what about this one? Decide whether the function's even odd or neither. Again, life's on repeat here, 51st dates, replacing x with negative x. All right, replace x with negative x. Under the square, the negative goes away, but 5 times negative x, we get the negative out in front of subtraction. Is this our original function? No. Is this a negative version of our original function? Meaning, has everything changed sign? No. The 3x squared is still positive. And so this is a situation where it's neither odd nor even. All right, and so no symmetry here. No big deal. All right, but again, let's look at the trick. What kind of exponents do we have? Well, here we have even. That's amazing handwriting here. We have even. And what is 1? One? 1 is odd. All right. And so because we have a mixture of even and odd exponents, we end up with no symmetry.